Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks. And today I'm going to be playing the most overpowered tanks at tier 5 using Tomato GG's awesome win rate differential statistic, which is the difference between the win ratio that a tank is achieving and the actual win ratio of the players that are playing it. So, firstly, let's take a look to see what the best heavy tanks are. Now, this is an interesting one the Excelsior. Apparently, the average win ratio of a player in the Excelsior is 43%, suggesting to me that because it's an invite vehicle, for a lot of players. There are a lot of terrible players playing this tank, but still the vehicle is getting an average win ratio of 49%. But considering that you probably don't all want me to just play premium tanks for this entire list, I'm going to pick to play the BDR instead, which is giving its players plus 4% win rate. The average win ratio of players is 48.5 and, and the tank is achieving 52.48% wins. So this vehicle is so good that even though it's been nerfed recently, it is still towards the top of the list. The BDR is great because it has fantastic alpha damage and decent penetration. 135 pen on its 90mm caliber gun with 240 alpha. Wargaming, as I said recently, massively nerfed this tank. They nerfed the damage per minute of the vehicle and I believe they either adjusted the speed or maybe it was just some of the, the all-round gun handling of the tank. Nevertheless, even with the nerfs, I'm hoping today that we're going to be able to do good. And oh dear, it looks like it's one of those days where the matchmaker has pitted me against some wonderful tier 7 tanks. Well, when you've got 175 millimeters of gold pen, well, I might have to just spam a few gold rounds when I get dealing with some of the more heavy vehicles on the enemy team. So this was probably one of the most frivolous things that I ever purchased in World of Tanks. I mean, don't get me wrong. The style looks really cool. It's kind of like uh, an Imperial Guard style, I guess, with Mordian written down the side. It does look cool. This is one of the first kind of styles that Wargaming actually released that you could just purchase inside the uh, the premium store on their website. I think it costs like eight euros or whatever. The, the, the problem is it's on a BDR. And funnily enough, this tank is actually quite good for a tech tree tank, but who would have thought a BDR? I guess the reason why they've done it is because Let's be honest, uh, well, I think Warhammer probably did take some inspiration from some of the uh, the, uh, the real tanks from real life, right? When you think about it, even the Mark tanks, those original British vehicles, do look very Warhammer-esque. But they were kind of many years before even the uh, first few editions of, of Warhammer 40k, right? Anyway, BDR, let's go and get stuck in. Once again, Uncle Scrubby Baby is taking some time off World of Tanks, so I haven't played World of Tanks since the last video that I made. I'm pre-preparing this one, so it's actually Sunday, but I'm not going to release this video, I don't think, until like Wednesday or Thursday, something like that. But I haven't actually played World of Tanks since last Thursday, so I haven't played for kind of like three or four days, so I might be a little bit rusty. But it didn't stop me in my game when I was playing that that sneaky Japanese light tank. So maybe it's not going to stop me today. Talk about stop me. Let's see if I can stop this 45 TP. Whoa, the shell deviates and goes wide. So there's a, a recently buffed tier 5 heavy tank as well. A couple of Churchills are coming around the corner. And unfortunately, I missed the lower plate. So this thing's armor is not bad. It's got 40 millimeters of hull armor uh, out on the side. So I can side scrape 60 millimeters of frontal armor as well. So I'm just hoping that I can get these Churchills. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. And these Churchills can't seem to manage to catch me. Funnily enough, I think that this tank's hull goes over the tracks once again, a bit like on the uh, the Churchill, so I can actually shoot him in the front track and be able to catch him. And I guess that's why this tank is just strong. They're doing 75 damage to me, or they're not doing 75 damage to me. It was actually the KV-1SA that actually managed to pen me there. But when I hit them, I do 240. So those are some good trades. So we've got a Britannia Panther in the middle. Not too concerned, because unless I really try and go up the slope, he's not going to be able to catch me. My team seem, seem to be hell set on just amalgamating in the center. they got a TOG there as well. Um, I, on the other hand, I'm going to try and get on this T-3485M. Uh, I managed to actually hit the weak point on the front of that vehicle, which is kind of like the machine gun port. I'm going to have to start to load some gold soon, because I don't think I can go through this guy frontally reliably. That'll be the last shell I bounce off him, though, because as I said, the gold pen on this tank is rather nice. Let's just come around the corner slowly and see if we can snap a shot. Well, I had to open my big, fat, flappy mouth saying, that's the last round that I'm going to bounce off him, but it looks like I will be bouncing another one. But um, that is because he was vastly better angled for the second shell of the hitting. So this KV-1SA comes around the corner. 
I don't know who spotted him, but was it me with my, like, viewports around the corner? Or was it the Super Hellcat from above? Probably the Super Hellcat from above. So I think, I think, I'm feeling quite confident. I've been doing well, just chilling at the back. But considering I've got a Super Hellcat here, I might make a push play. The only problem with making this push play is if the 45 TP doesn't have a load of TOG to deal with, he could just turn around and start to shoot me and kind of, like, my weak point on top. But, um... He's not proxy spotting me, so that's good. I think the KV-1SA might be on my right up this slope, just taking a look at the other players. There he is. We'll get a good shot into him. And we'll fall back. The t 3485 m making a push through the center. And this is where this tank is just so much better than like a KV-1SA. He's got the auto loader, but I've got the alpha. And that's what makes this tank fabulous. And now he's a one shot for me pretty much every single time unless I min roll. But he's decided that he wants to go and feed the TOG instead. So, okay, bro. Okay, bro. Well, no, you're mine. You're mine, mate. You're mine. I got ya. Man, this game is actually really close. The Britannia Panther's thinking about coming around the corner. Don't want them to get me in my weak point, but I would like to see if I can get a shot around them. I've got to repair that. And that's the problem with this tank, is that if they hit you... I think the armor actually counts as this part as well. And so, uh, if they do hit you in the tracks, they can also damage you. Like I said on the Churchill. So, oh no. Oh no, please. Come on, BDR. We've got to do this. We're down two tanks. We're down a thousand hit points. But we are not out of it. The the Empire of Man marches forwards and all that. So we're going to do some Warhammer roleplay. A little bit of Warhammer roleplay. I'll roleplay this guy's hit points away. <laughs> Man, this thing hits so hard, doesn't it? And it's a pretty accurate gun as well. And think this is the nerfed version of this vehicle. Now, all the statistics that you've seen are the last 30 days. So we'll be taking into account the nerfs. It's not historical data, so to say. That VK just drive past. I can't uh, believe he managed to sneak past that rock, but it makes sense now in retrospect. Don't want to get caught by that uh, Britannia Panther above. Now, what I'm doing here is incredibly dangerous. I don't have a I don't have a repair kit, so I could just lose my entire tank here. Why is my repair so long? Oh, the worst possible thing to happen. Oh, hopefully we can get forwards without getting hit by the T-34 in the side. Now that T-34 is over there, but unfortunately I can't see Diddly Squat. Well, actually I say that, but now I can see. Hello, what's up, boys? You want some? I'll give it to you as long as the Britannia Panther doesn't get me. I'm going to ask the Super Hellcat for help. Help me, Super Hellcat. Looks like he is actually going to. So I should just be able to chill here. I don't think that the Britannia Panther has the shot in through the center. I'm going to change to a gold round here for the uh, T-3485M. And I'm just going to have to pray that the Super Hellcat comes round. I say, but now the Britannia Panther's actually significant. Oh no, there's someone in front. There's someone on the side. He overexposed himself so much. I think the IS-22 should have hit him. And he's actually getting caught by the T-3485M, who's now managed to put a play through the center. So that's great. So, I'm happy. I'm down to 15 hit points, so I'd like to have a few more hit points if I may. But, uh, should we just go for this? Should we go for this M10 RBFM? Which is actually one of the most popular tier 5s. Very popular vehicle. Whoa! We know where the T-78 is now. And we'll tell our team where the T-78 is. So he's fallen all the way back. I'm just gonna let this Super Hellcat do his thing. Actually, that T-3485M might push this Super Hellcat. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reverse again. I don't wanna get hit by the, uh, T-78. I've got to stay in this game. And I think I'll just pre-aim on this corner and say the Super Hellcat that I'll help him if he comes around the corner. Uh, I'll help you if he comes around the corner. But don't push. Don't push him. Oh, well. I mean, I... Okay. <laughs> I guess he, he probably didn't realize that I just can't magically shoot around the corner. So I'll tell my team where the T-78 is and prepare my shells. Well, I tell you what. This is a pretty good way to start off. Is that a chicken in there? It is. There's a chicken coop there. Am I going to get spotted from this position? Possibly. I think he's in that bush. I'd be surprised if he wasn't in that bush. Well, there's magic duck on the enemy team. There's some other fowl towards the left of me here. I guess I am playing a little bit like a chicken. Are they insulting me? Are all the chickens in that coop insulting me right now because I'm playing like a chicken because I'm not advancing? Well, sometimes... Oh, come on. Sometimes the chickens get to survive, not get caught by the fox. Doesn't look like this T-78 handles, uh, holds much, much hope for their end of this game. 176 damage received from the T-3485M. So yeah, all in all, BDR. I can totally see why this tank does do well. It's just got great alpha and it's got enough penetration. Solid vehicle to start off.
the most overpowered tier 5 list. Alright, so those are the heavies. Now let's pick a medium. And is it any surprise? Look at that differential, boys and girls. 6.32% increased win rate for the Panzer V IV. And what's crazy about this tank is actually very sweaty players are playing this already. 53% average win rate of its players and nearly 60% win rate results. That is some crazy stuff. This is honestly one of those absolute filthy vehicles that if you want to uh, just jump in and just be completely overpowered, then you can. So I actually end up finishing number one on damage and number two on experience in the BDR. I'm very happy about that. A solid result for a solid tank. You can see why this one is doing well. Okay, so full disclosure, on my Panzer V IV, uh, I don't know why, but uh, I have the, uh, the girls and Panzer crew in here and I have my, what's her name? Miho Nishizumi on the front of the vehicle because that's what everybody wants to see when they're about to be rammed by a tier 7 hull at tier 5, right? Hopefully there'll be some kind of solace, I guess, with the 16-year-old the Japanese schoolgirl on the front of my vehicle. Goodness gracious, World of Tanks. World of Tanks and its collaborations never change. So if anyone watched my original video um, on some of the anime crews that they had inside World of Tanks when they first released uh, them on the Asia server. They released the Nameless Tank, which is a tier 8, I think it's a Japanese heavy. And then there's the Edelweiss, which is, I think it's a tier 8 Japanese medium as well. Those are Asia server exclusives, and they came with Valkyria Chronicles crew. And uh, if anyone remembers from my first preview or review of the vehicle, they just wouldn't shut up and they just didn't allow me to commentate. These days, however, I've got better at talking over players. So what's crazy about this tank is everything. Everything's crazy about this tank. It's got DPM, it's got a tier seven hull. The only thing that sucks is the turret. The penetration isn't great, but people spam gold. But what is... Uh, yeah, what's crazy about this vehicle is that it's a tier seven hull, so you can just pretty much angle it like this and most players aren't going to be able to deal with it. But what is undoubtedly the most crazy thing about the tank is that I think it has preferential matchmaking, meaning that you don't have to meet tier sevens. So you have a tier seven medium hull, albeit with a trash turret, and then you don't even have to meet tier seven. So you get to go and play against all of the tier fives and the tier sixes. And as we can see in this situation, we've ended up getting into a fairly nice matchup where we're playing against puppies. Does that BT7 even see me as I go in? He does. Should I try and blind fire at the back? Possibly. Okay, so let's see what happens when a tier seven hull decides to make a pressure play against a tier four light tank. Well, I can tell you, this is going to be the last thing that he's ever going to see. Um, I mean, I don't, I shouldn't really commit around this corner. No, I'm not going to. I was going to ram him there, but I realized it would just be suicide, and I've got to make sure I get into a better position for this KV-222. Okay. So this KV-222, as you all saw on the list, is one of the most overpowered tier 5 heavy tanks. But funnily enough, it's got a weak turret. So he's probably expecting farm, 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 farm. But what he won't be expecting is how powerful the German medium tank is above him. And there is a lot of Sugoi going on around here. For anyone who is not educated, Sugoi means awesome or like brilliant or whatever in, uh, in Japanese. And so whenever you hear... They don't stop. They don't stop. Can I? I I'm so close. I'm so close to just muting. <laughs> so, oh, oh, oh. For the YouTube content, I'm sure that a lot of you are probably enjoying me playing this vehicle purely so you can watch me suffer as I have to share a mic with five Japanese schoolgirls in a tank. Don't pen me, please. Why are you firing gold, bro? He ended up nearly taking 200 hit points off me. Oh god, how overpowered is this tank? You can pretty much just just drive out in front of people, and as long as they don't slam you in the hull, it works. All right, I see where the 14 TP is. The uh, BDR actually has that really nasty gun, so I'm gonna try and bait him into shooting my hull, come around the corner, put a shot into him. I've gotta watch out for the VK though, because it looks like the VK's got some good penetration. Fortunately for that 14 TP, his penetration is absolutely awful. We need, need to have a Sugoi counter. For any of you out there who don't mind re-watching this segment of the video, but seriously, put how many times the crew say Sugoi, or even me, how many times I say Sugoi, in the comments down below. I'm sure I'm not, I'm not going to be checking it for accuracy. 
<laughs> That's going to be down to you, boys and girls. Okay, so here we go. Churchill coming around the corner. Um, just got to basically try and use the Churchill here to distract while I hopefully put multiple shots in. I put another one in for free. There's a little Valentine at the back of the map. Wasn't that featured in my last... Uh, the tier 4 OP tanks? That is such a slow shell. I think somebody left a comment telling me that the HE shells are actually only like 180 meters a second. So, um, thanks for all my comments, by the way. I really appreciate all the YouTube comments. I don't, I don't have time usually to read every single one, but I try to. Um, so thank you all very much for all of your, your comments. Uh, and letting me know all the little bits of tidbits of information that I probably should actually know when I'm kind of actually commentating, right? That 14 TP just can't pen me. Oh, that artillery can, though. Maybe I overcommitted here. I gotta be careful. I gotta be careful, he says, as he's done 2,000 damage at tier 5. Gotta be careful in this vehicle. You don't really have to be careful in this vehicle. Oh, I could be tracked. The artillery could get me here, actually, around the corner. I don't want that to be the case. Uh, I've still got so much more uh, that I want to farm on the enemy team. Okay, the Churchill died to the BDR, so I'm gonna go around the corner and I'm gonna finish off the BDR. I bounced the VK, so I'm going to finish off the VK. I'm going to finish off... I was thinking about finishing off the Valentine AT. Hit that guy. There's the Gorilla, so the Gorilla can't get me anymore. Oh, this just feels absolutely filthy. I mean, guy, guys and girls, there are very few vehicles where I truly feel like I'm an absolute goblin for playing. But this is one. I am the most filthy goblin ever. Am I going to get a top gun? I'm not going to get a top gun. The looks is going to get the top gun. I am the most filthy goblin of all time, boys and girls. The most filthy goblin of all time for playing this vehicle. Uh, that's that's 2,700 combined and five gills. Uh, I probably could have got a little bit more in there. Um, but I didn't want to get hit by the gorilla. And I didn't realize they couldn't still get me around the corner. So that was a high caliber and a steel wall medal. Um, that was 1,580 base experience. And no, your eyes do not deceive you. That is a second class mastery badge because this is, I think, the hardest tank to get an ace tanker in in the game because it's so overpowered. There are so many sweaty players playing it that it has outrageously high ace tanker requirements. So 1,580, that might be a bold claim to say for many of you out there, that might be your best experience game of all time. And in the Panzer 5-4, it doesn't even get you a first class medal. And as this is a full premium tank, we didn't fire that much gold, if any gold. So we make 51,000 credits profit. This thing is absolutely filthy. And if Wargaming ever sell it, I would recommend you get your hands on it. But also know that you probably have to take a shower after every few games. So that was the best medium tank. Why don't we play the best light tank? Now, this has to be a, a setup. There's no way it's the AMX 13 FL 11, but that's probably because it's the only premium tier five light. So one of the only downsides to using wind rate difference is that tanks are played stock and so the leopard the chaffy the covenanter elc they'll all have to be played stock which brings down the uh the win rate difference in a tank so it does give an advantage to premium and reward vehicles accordingly considering that the leopard has actually got nearly the same win rate difference i'm going to play the leopard instead so this tier 5 german light tank is famous inside the game. Now, a lot of you are going to be very angry at me here because a lot of people, when they play the Leopard, they want to use the uh, three centimeter little pew 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 gun. However, I don't like the damage per minute on that gun and I vastly prefer the five centimeter gun with spamming a little bit of gold on my opponents. I'm gonna be running vents, vert stabs and binoculars. And yeah, I've got a good selection of gold ammo to hopefully be able to deal with whatever it may be. So why is the Leopard good in World of Tanks? Well, it's going to come down to excellent damage per minute at 1,800. Pretty darn good gun handling. The fact that you can use vertical stabilizers on a tier 5, which a lot of people use the spray and pray gun, and they can do up to 360 damage in a magazine, which is over half the health of a tier 5 light tank, which is fairly formidable. Add to that and 10 degrees of gun depression, which I'm not sure if it's actually all over the vehicle. No, there's only 3.2 degrees over the front and then 10 degrees over the side. And that's really why the, uh, the Leopard is so good. So I'm going to have to turn my tank sideways here if I want to play on this rather rare map for me to play Wide Park. Wide Park is only available for tier 6 and below 
low tanks. And so when you are playing a TOG, yeah, or an OI, uh, it's good news when you get to see some white part because you know that you're going to have a lot of fun. So yeah, look at that awful gun depression over the front, but then 10 degrees over the side. Crazy stuff there. I probably should have tried to scout the center. Looks like the ELC is going to get that, so that's a bit of a misplay by me. Um, maybe I can get a little bit more vision. A little bit. Get a little bit of a Churchill spotted. I don't want to get clapped, though. Okay, so this map is fantastic for working these trains. The trains have been changed from back in the day. Back in the day, there were a few more gaps, but there are still some gaps you can use. Just be careful about getting nailed from the hill. And if I get hit by that OI, well, I'm not going to. I'm going to be saying goodbye if I get hit by that OI, if you know what I mean. Okay, um, so I'd love to get this leopard in the side. But again, there's a Cavalier and friends all over there. You know what I probably can do is I can make my way over here and just try to use my gun depression to go through the side of this OI. This OI is a terrifying prospect, and I can't even pen it with gold in the side. If this thing just rushes me, I am proper dead, mate. Proper dead, not even like semi-dead. Just proper dead. I think I knocked out his engine there. I think he might have had to use his repair kit on his engine. So if I can track him one more time. Oh, that's it. He's got his, his engine's gone. His engine's gone. That's the second time his engine's gone. I know with the Yagpanzer IV how bad that engine is. And this is where I just, oh, get to die. <laughs> oh, no, what a shame. But that is a tier six tank destroyer that I nearly just farmed out. So it shows you just how brutal this vehicle is. So a little bit of tunnel vision there by me to not focus this OI, which is a definitive misplay. Um, kind of worried this OI is going to try and get me. And now I'm down to a one shot. Uh, there's a, wow, look at that. I actually spotted the AMX at the back. Crazy. He's trying to get some sneaky shots in against me. I got a funny feeling this OI is just going to push me in a second. I'm just going backwards, forwards, forwards, backwards, getting some vision in against these tanks. Just doing some work, even not in the best matchup here. Nice. There you go. The G-Ro finishes him off. I'll give a thumbs up to my G-Ro. Always nice to thank people who help you. And there's nothing more satisfying than me than when they also gives you a, give you a thumbs up back. Um, yeah, it's just one of those things. Uh, every little helps, right? Ooh, Mr. Churchill nearly could have got me there. Okay, so that's a really good impact by me. Uh, that's two tier sixes that have been destroyed. And while I didn't take them out single-handedly, I definitely had a positive impact. And you can see why this thing is just great. Tiny little turret, 10 degrees of gun depression over the side. Nice damage per minute. Have to spam a little bit of gold. Amazing gun handling with the vert stabs. Only problem is, is it can't use a gun rammer, but eh, well. I would definitely take a gun rammer on this tank if I, if I could. But the reason why I can't use a gun rammer is because, of course, the vehicle is specialized at, um... Oh, the Churchill did get me. No! I'm lucky to be alive. I've only got two hit points. Very lucky. That Churchill was using the top gun, which he may have been. He should have hit me for 150 there. He's really trying to farm me, this little Churchill. I don't like it. I don't like it very much, Mr. Churchill. Why would you do this to me? He's called Kappa Ringos. Well, Kappa to you too. Well, he's probably like got a kappa face right on while he's trying to farm me, right? Possibly. Okay, Mr. Churchill. Oh, it doesn't look like it's going too well for you now, sir. As soon as the Churchill's down, I'll be able to uh, start to farm his friends, which is always the goal in World of Tanks, is to farm. Farm friends. You know, make peace with your friends. Oh, no! No! I'm so lucky that I didn't die. Is he going to really come back around the corner? I'm really worried about this Churchill. Oh, I've Got the cavern. No, how do I bounce? How do I bounce again? What is this RNG? This game's actually ended up being very close here. Like, really close, actually. Really close. Gotta be careful. I'm trying to work this ridge line the best I can, but it's awkward when you have to turn your tank side on to be able to depress your gun. Oh, my team did a great job going in there. Alright, there's a Chinukai. I think I'm gonna go in. I realize there's a Dikamax at the back of the map. Can't really worry about that too much. Uh, let's see if I can go get a kill. Never mind, no kill for me. There's a leopard in the center of the map. Is he going to push over? Is he going to come after me? I think I just dodged the Dickamax shell. Okay, this guy won't be able to see me through the wall. Every time I aim at something, it's like a Saving Private Ryan kind of moment, you know? Where, um, is it Matt? No, it's not Matt Damon, it's Tom Hanks. Thanks for that, Mr. Cromwell. It's... Uh, Tom Hanks is just firing the pistol, right? And then the bomber comes and blows up the tank. I just, I just spoiled, I just spoiled Saving Private Ryan for everyone. I mean, am I, is it, does it really count as a spoiler when a, a film came out, what's about 25 years ago? Don't think you can really consider that to be a spoiler. 
still one of, if not the greatest war films of all time, right? Oh no, I can already hear the, the comments in the YouTube are, are sounding off again. Actually, Kubi, it's not that good. Who, who, who wouldn't like Saving Private Ryan? Seriously. There'll be one person out there. Me! <laughs> oh no! Talk about me. I wasn't paying attention and the M4A1 shut me down, shooting through two walls there. Good jump, Lucy. All right, so look, this wasn't the best of maps for a light tank, but still, I, I managed to do like uh, 1,400 combined. It's not the best of results, but considering it was against high tier tanks, it wasn't too bad. I can definitely see why the Leopard is doing well. All right, so we've played the best heavy tank, the best medium tank, the best light. Let's see what the best tank destroyer is. Wow, okay. So it's actually the AT2 with regards to tech tree, uh, just above the PZSFL, which is the death toaster, right? Or the M10 RBFM, which is actually by far the most played by three times. So I'll play the M10 RBFM for you all, and then it won't seem like I'm just playing premium tanks or regular tanks. Is that what you'd like to see from this series? A nice balance of premium tanks and regular tanks. If there's any standout premiums, I'll play the standout premiums. But I also want to try and throw in a few um, tech tree tanks as well for a little bit of the mix. Okay, so a game for the Leopard. I don't have the best of crew. I don't even have brothers in arms for this vehicle. I am going to boost that crew up a little bit by using my boost. And wow, so far so good. Let's see if we can continue with the M10 RBFM. So this vehicle, it was uh, part of a mission marathon, uh, like a very easy mission marathon to do. And you've got yourself a special style for it, as you can see. One of the most awkward things about this tank is I think it's the only French tank destroyer that has a radio operator. Um, and my radio operator only has brothers in arms and situational awareness. So I don't even have concealment on my radio operator, which will massively bring down what is one of the strengths of this vehicle by not having concealment. That it is actually quite a sneaky tank destroyer. So why is the M10 RBFM so popular? Well, it's going to be popular because it's very comfortable. It's got a fully traversable turret. It's got 10 degrees of gun depression and it has decent damage per minute 2200 you can be able to pump that up with a gun rammer can't use vents though because of an open top tank but that allows you to take something like binoculars and rotation device and i would recommend rotation device on this vehicle because it has a lot of bloom after firing this is probably one of the best tanks in the game for using a rotation device on so i would recommend it Interestingly, because my crew is so good, I'm not even going to use binoculars on this vehicle. I'm just going to go with coated optics, which will end up really helping. I'll say thank you to the staghound for letting me cross. That was nice of him, wasn't it? Or maybe he just doesn't know what he's doing. <laughs> I think he had to take his hands off WASD. He was probably like, where's my Z key? Okay. <laughs> you should probably be forward in scouting, mate. Not just uh, messing about with Uncle Scrubby Babs. But then again, I am... Possibly one of the most messing about kind of players within that regard. So I'm trying to think about where to go here. And to the front, says Uncle Scrubby Baby. Even though I think traditionally sitting back there where the Wolverine the Stug are would probably be the better idea for the um, M10 RBFM. I like to play my tank destroyers a little bit more offensively. Man, that is some pretty big reticle even with the rotation device. Yeah, I would definitely recommend it. I can imagine some people putting bounty equipment on their tier 5s would be absolutely outrageous. Okay, that T-67 is another scary American tier 5, although this one's French, right? It's French, but it's American. It's American and French. American French. French American. Does that make it Canadian? Oh no. I just, I, all the time during these live YouTube videos, I just imagine that I'm ruining the comment section down below constantly. All of my Canadian viewers Man, Canada, you know, Canada's basically the hat of America, right? Or the hat of the US. Or, I guess you could call it the brain. You know, the brain's at the top. The US is kind of the body within that regard. Ah! Oh, how can you fire before me? Why did my shells go off so wild? Talk about Canada. That's a very Canadian-looking style there. Rigged Karma playing their Easy 8. An American tank with a Canadian flag? What is this? Well, to be fair, there are only American tanks. There are no Canadian tanks. Apart from the Ram, which everyone who's been watching my streams over the last two or three months was able to get completely for free. Talk about getting things completely for free. While I can 
I can or can't confirm that Uncle Scrubby Baby will be available for free. I can confirm what Wargaming said in their video, which is from the 22nd of November, you're going to be able to get Uncle Scrubby Baby in World of Tanks once again via oh, Twitch drops. So, as I need to focus on my game rather than just telling you all that I'm I'm dead. I'm dead. No, that was so stupid. That was so stupid. That was stupid. Okay, I'll tell you what. I'll play the... I'll play the... Um, I'll play the a the 82. I definitely lost my focus. I was too complacent from playing overpowered vehicles that I lost my focus in that game. I, I I probably end up losing that one. I was thinking too much about Canada. That's right. Blame Canada. I'm going to blame Canada. It was that Canadian flag talking about Canada being the hat or the brain of America. You know, just I got to blame Canada from that. Definitely wasn't my fault at all. It was definitely not my fault. But as I was saying, QB Commander will be back in World of Tanks on the 22nd of November, as Wargaming confirmed in a video earlier this month. It's going to be available via Twitch Drop, so hopefully I'll see all of you tuning into my streams to be able to get yourself, me, in the game. Me in the game, right? Okay, so we're playing the 82. This was the most overpowered tech tree, Tier 5. Now, a lot of you might be thinking, what? The 82? What are you talking about? Well, the reason why the 82 does so well is when it's in a matchup like this. In a matchup like this, this thing is disgusting. They have to fire gold at my weak point to be able to penetrate it, pretty much. The only problem with this tank is it's very slow. So, I'm going to slap a turbo on it, a gun rammer, and durability. I'm going to have no view range. Literally, look at my view range. It's a complete joke. However, um, I'm hoping that even though I have no view range, I'm still going to be able to do what this tank is meant to do. And that is to explode through a heavy tank flank. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go crush the heavy tank flank. The only problem is there's only one heavy tank on the enemy team. And so to all intents and purposes, I'll get there. My Excelsior will farm up the KV-1, and then I'll be on a map where I'm not going to be able to spot any of the light tanks or tank destroyers or medium tanks that are around the back. But oh well, that's just the way it's going to be. And funnily enough, you can get a very good win ratio by just winning the heavy tank engagement. And so it's why I quite like to set up my tank destroyers to be better at assaulting. I like to... Oh, we won the M10 RBFM game, by the way. I like to set up my tank destroyers with a turbo to get to the front and a durability to be able to uh, play aggressively there to keep my tracks on and stop my opponents from being able to uh, surround me or outmaneuver me. And let's see if that's going to be the case here. Let's see if it's going to be the case that if I just play aggressively and get stuck in, that I will win. We'll find out very soon. So I've told the Excelsior I'm going in. I'm going to tell this M10 RBFM that I'm going in. I think that KV-1 was firing heat rounds with the derp. So I've got to be careful because he has got still got decent pen. But uh, let's see what happens with this guy right now. Let's see what happens with this guy. <laughs> okay. I think we saw what happened with that guy. Oh, man. That didn't work out for him. Okay, I think this KV-1 is using the derp, so I'm a little bit afraid. Uh, but uh, maybe he just sucks. Um, it, really, that's how I play this tank. And that's how you should play this tank. And how you should end up hopefully getting a good win ratio on this vehicle. Just hope they suck. Or hope they shoot someone else. Just like that. He shot someone else. So now I'm going to farm. I'm not even sure if I need gold on this tank. Should I try firing regular rounds? I can fire regular rounds. Uh, he says that, but he uh, just failed the shot there. Okay, there you go. That's how you do it. That's how you do it. That's how simple this vehicle is, ladies and gentlemen. Woo! Boys and girls. Oh, not another M10 RBFM. Okay, good. We managed to ricochet. That's how simple this tank is. Just bludgeon your way through the heavies. Fire what ammo you need. If you can make the regular rounds work. The gold rounds on this tank are actually disgusting. 70 extra millimeters of penetration. I nearly ended up dying there against the KV-1 because I I played for free. Um, but yeah, you basically just sit in front of your opponents 
They had to fire heat at my weak point to be able to deal with me. I can tell you that KV-1 is not a scrub lord. For him to be using the derp, you know he's a, somebody who's usually farming up. So I'm just going to fire a few shells here. Just try and intimidate my opponents into thinking the bushes are being blind fired so they don't come forward. So then hopefully I'll be able to uh, actually start to spot them. So I don't know whether the M10 has actually fallen back. But I managed to get my Excelsior forwards through the breach. And as you saw, the Excelsior is one of the most overpowered vehicles. Giving people decent win ratio. But I've, I think it's probably because of bots, honestly. I think... I can't believe the Excelsior would have a 43% average win ratio. But for it to still get 49%, that probably means that... If you're like a 50% player, you're still going to get 56 on average, right? Um, okay, cool. So, talk about... I think we found out why it has a, that win ratio. Literally, he just drove sideways out in front of a tank and then just took it. Okay, Matilda, I don't think you can pen me even with your... Oh, no, there's an arty. Oh, this is this is not looking good, boys and girls. There we go. There's a shot. Got to watch out for the arty here right now. But I've also got to try and push back the uh, Matilda. Ooh, 11 damage. I'll never spot that Matilda after that BT-7 is dead. So I need to take this opportunity to go dig the artillery out from the corner, I think. I could get nailed in the side here. But uh, I think if I just take the corner, then at least I can get rid of the arty and maybe I can still do this. Um, I don't think I can afford to get shot in the side by the Matilda here. Oh, he's coming round. Oh, this is not good. This is not good. Is he just going to sit there and take it? I've got to hurry up and get the corner. Maybe I can reverse towards him. Actually, it looks like he might die to the BT-7, so I don't need to... Why did I open my big mouth again? i got to go get that arty, dudes. i got to go get that arty. Oh, what is this game? No! Oh, I think the Wolverine might get me. No, he doesn't. Oh, this is such a weird game. I'm bouncing a Stug. I'm bouncing a Wolverine. I'm somehow managing to actually destroy the Wolverine. But suddenly, I'm about to not have any eyes very soon. I'm going to have nobody on my team who can actually spot for me. Oh, what a crazy game this is. What shall I do? Shall I just go sit in the cap circle after I kill the arty and then just pray that they just can't pen me? Oh my lord, this could be legendary. Where's this artillery gone? Is he still over here? Oh, he's running. I can't let him escape. No, he'll be able to kill me now. Oh, if I go up on the hill. If I go up on the hill, come on, don't fail me now, engine. Don't fail me now, little engine. Don't fail me now, little engine. Hopefully I can spot him. Oh, there's a Stug who got me somehow. Oh, no, the Arty's getting me. Oh, this is it. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord, we got him. Got a turn. Who shall I go for right now? T67, I'll never be able to see him otherwise. Oh, this is moments. Oh, this is moments. Is he going to fire HE at me? Oh, if I kill this Stug, I can win. <gasps> okay! <laughs> I think that made up for the M10 RBFM! Oh my lord. If that doesn't show you how broken this vehicle is, ladies and gents, boys and girls, I don't know what will I, look, I'm not going to pretend it was an immense amount of skill. Look, I did the right thing with my target selection at the end, and I knew that I had to push, because if I didn't push, that I wasn't going to be able to spot those tanks for very long. So to have the uh, the foresight to have the focus fire on the T-67 that I knew would escape and be able to shoot me, and to blind fire that Stug, I just knew that we could do it from there. Okay, that was a high caliber steel wall, top gun, Spartan and a cool headed medal that poor little uh, Matilda on the enemy team I think he didn't fire any gold or he ran out of gold and that was all she wrote so ladies and gentlemen boys and girls that was 
five of the most overpowered tanks in the game and the five most overpowered tanks arguably at tier five five wins nearly three kills a game hope you enjoyed this video today if you did give me a thumbs up if you hated it give it a thumbs down and let me know in the comments what tanks you're disappointed that weren't featured in the most overpowered video today and as always thank you so much for watching you've been epic and hopefully i'll see you soon